This is Paul Diano on the Zach Moonshine Show. So, uh, Paul, what's what's going on, man? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I've been, I've been uh, pretty sick for four years, right, pretty much. But I uh, went on surgeries and stuff, and I had bad sepsis, which almost killed me. So that was, that was four years ago. And I've had to wait two years to be clear of sepsis before they could operate on me. I've had a couple of surgeries done. That's it. So I'm just sitting around, not walking for four years. So I'm waiting for operations. So that's what's going on. Man. So, uh, well, tell us about this this new release, uh, Hell Over Wall Trap, man. I was just listening to it. It's fucking amazing, man. I love the the uh, the quality of the recording. is really good. Uh, I got to thank Thomas for that. Uh, well, it's my out front sound engineer. But uh, oh, this is weird because... Um, I don't even remember them too much about the festival because we, we played them, you know, before we got sick, we played all the time, pretty much about nine to ten months of the year on tour. But uh, I, re- I sort of remember this one because it was um, a very weird mixer. It's like a pop sort of festival. And I thought, well, I don't know what the fuck we're doing on there. <laughs> you know, being like a metal band. But uh, they had some, some guy called Sydney Youngblood or something. His fucking name is, I don't know. And there was a load of, like, sort of, you know, sort of teenage sort of spotty kids or sort of there <laughs> but, but there was quite a few uh, there was quite a few headbangers there as well which is quite good for us so we went out basically just kind of scared to piss out the uh, out the little kids <laughs> and uh, it, it came out really well but the problem was is that the on stage sound was god awful because the engineer we had was from the festival and he'd obviously never worked with a rock band before and it was pretty shit so we thought oh, alright we're just all you know, just put it down a bad experience. Uh, out front was good, uh, so we went to the festival all in all, or a good show. And um, Thomas found this stuff um, just before Christmas, a couple of months back. It was unbelievable. And he, he found this. It was so bad, but he spent a bit of time at his uh, at his sound ranch and uh, cleaned it up. And said, "What do you think? Have a listen." And he sent me a couple of tracks or a few teasers. I haven't actually heard the whole thing yet. And I'm like, "Wow, this ain't bad." What are we going to do with it? I said, I don't know. And then we, we talked about it. And we said, I'll tell you what, let's give it to the record company, see what they say. And if they like it, and they did, uh, we'll put it out. It's kind of a stop gap until I get a new album out after surgeries and all that stuff and try and get myself back to normal again. Yeah. I, I was yeah I was reading about that, that uh, it was 12 years ago, and he, he finally found the tapes again, and uh, he managed to save the old recordings. Yeah. He's a good, he's a good guy, Tom. He's a great sound engineer. I've worked with him a lot. Uh, took it up Russia with me and everywhere. He's, he's awesome. Yeah, he's really good. Now, when when you listen to those uh, to those recordings, that was from uh, 2006. And uh, yeah, how, how does what does that does that take you back to uh, you know the how did it feel on stage singing those songs? Oh God, I've done well, I've, I've had to do it for years and years and years. You know, but. Some promoters, they book you only because they think, you know, it's got to be sort of uh, Iron Maiden heavy sort of thing, mm-hmm. which it was in some ways. And uh, But the thing is, when you got your own fans coming up to you and saying, oh, for fuck's sake, stop playing that and do your own stuff. And I thought, like, yeah, that's a good idea. So now when I'm coming back again, now, now obviously there's got to be a couple of shows to sort of kick it in a bit and get sort of back in the familiar surroundings to get the voice working again, hopefully. And... Um, yeah, it will be different this time. We're going to be playing more, more of my repertoire, as they say. Yeah, I was going to say some of the standout tracks, uh, like the Faith Healer. That's a fucking badass song, man. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we did it on the Killers album. On the first Killers album, we did Murder One, uh, and you know the guys knew I would go for it because I'm a huge Alex Harvey fan. Uh, he's one of my all-time heroes. So we said, yeah, we go for it. I, I haven't got the lyrics exactly right, the way, the way Alex sang it. And I don't know, we've got the right lyrics, to be quite honest with you. But uh, we sort of made the our own, and it went down quite well. So, uh, yeah, I'm quite happy about it. Uh, it's, it's a shame Alex wasn't alive to hear it. I'd like to learn his opinion. But there you go. But, uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with it. It's a good song. 
No, oh, yeah, man. Uh, as far as uh, what's coming in the future for for you, is there anything you can tell us that that you've got that that you could let us know about that might be coming out or? <laughs> Any surprises? <laughs> yeah, yeah, any, any uh, surprises? New, new, new stuff coming out soon? Yeah, we got some ideas on that. I'm doing a bit of writing, um, sort of outside the box a bit because I, I don't have, um, you know, I don't have a band anymore. What I use is I use the best band I can get in the country. I'm going to at the time. I've done this for years now, but uh, the simple reason why is it keeps the ticket prices down for the fans. You know, I've never got into this about money. I've got into this to play music. Um, so, you know, we try and keep the prices as low as we can, and we use the best bands we can find. And I've got a couple of I've used for years now over in Brazil and then Argentina and Chile and stuff like that. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to sort of... Um, sort of rearrange the set but there will be a new album coming but at the minute I've had a couple of ideas and we, we wanted to record a little bit of it when it didn't come out as well as we all thought it would uh, I think the best thing to do is concentrate and getting well first getting up on my feet and getting some confidence back because it knocks you for six you know I can't even I've not even been able to come back to America yet to go see my wife and my kids for four years because I'm not allowed to fly oh um, man it's fucking difficult yeah it's difficult at the minute it's been a very, very tough four years, almost going into five years now, and I've got a brilliant surgeon, but unfortunately, he's the one who books books your surgery, not not the clinic. So it doesn't matter if, uh, if it's private or not, I'll just have to wait for him. <laughs> right. That's what I'm doing, and it's, just, it's driving me insane. But uh, So in the meantime, there's a few bits and pieces going on, but um, I'm having a rewrite and a rethink. Um, my friends, uh, who Doug Sampson from Maiden, plays with the band Air Force um, they're, they're a great band they're just doing their first album I've done two tracks on that with them you know as a guest vocalist uh, and me and Chop have known each other all our lives since we used to kids back in the East End of London and that so we're uh, we've decided we're going to try and write together for the first time and if it comes out good then we'll uh, we'll go ahead and start using it for me so you know I've got another a different, a different writing partner for a change Hell yeah, man. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, you know, uh, I interview a lot of bands, and a lot, I, I can't tell you how many bands that I've spoken to when I ask them about their influences early on, you know, what got them into metal music and stuff. So many, so many bands have cited those first couple of records from Iron Maiden as, as you know, big big influences on them how, how does how does that feel to uh i mean it's great isn't it it's a great feeling because i mean i i i hear it a lot as well you know especially from people who are your peers and that as well you know um you know i used to hear it all the time with the guys in pantera metallica and sepultura and stuff and these are all people and friends of mine i've known for many many years and it's nice to know that we sort of got me well, yeah there was only a couple of years difference between the bands but um yeah it's nice to know that we sort of uh influence them as long as it's none of this nabby pamby shit we get nowadays, <laughs> I'm not interested in that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, some of the good stuff in there. Yeah, it's nice to know that we had an influence. Brilliant. Yeah, as far as you're, as far as you uh, growing up, and, and what got you into playing music? Oh, man, I, 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 I just loved, uh, I don't know, really. I suppose it's weird. Um, <laughs> there's always sort of music around the house. You know, my mum was a big Elvis fan and stuff like that, and uh, I don't know, it's always it's always around, there's always some, some sort of music around the house, but uh, me, I, I had a revelation, um, when punk came, it sort of hit me <laughs> straight in the head, and I thought, oh, fucking hell, this is great, anyone can do this, and, you know, I liked a lot of rock stuff as well, but uh, punk was the one that really got my interest, you know, I see the Pistols first, and then I see the Ramones, and that was it. <laughs> oh, it was all over for me. I'm like, that's it. This is what I want to do. Um, I don't know. That's sort of a, I tried to mix. I don't know. The sort of punk attitude was like heavy metal, which is uh, sort of worked a bit with me at first. But uh, obviously, the more complex I was getting, the less you know, the less it would have worked for me. So you know, that's all, that was it really. Punk and. Uh, Sort of real good old heavy metal. Hell yeah, man. 
Well, uh, one thing I like to ask everybody that, that comes on to the show, uh, looking back on your career, is there anything that you can remember that, uh, like some kind of crazy story, something that, that you've seen happen, or maybe something that not everybody knows about? Oh, we've had a couple of them. Um, when we went on the KISS tour, we, we supported KISS all over Europe, yeah, but we wouldn't fight in England with them because we were bigger than they were. Um, I think it was the last night of the concert, I can't remember exactly which country or what the fuck we were in, but, um, oh god, yeah, they they decided to come up and sort of, uh, sort of do the old cream pie stuff in our faces. Well, ah, good move. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, we turned the tables back on them immediately. They came in with full makeup on and tried to sort of, uh, you know, cream pie us and we got back so the show had to be delayed for a while why don't we do their makeup and all that shit got Judas <laughs> Priest a couple of times as well when uh, Take on the World was um, the intros taped recorded and that so when the boys turned around and tried to sing there was bananas instead of microphones that was a good one <laughs> Ace freed his guitar when it went up in the air flies up in the air and all the stuff going off instead of it coming back down there was a rubber chicken <laughs> no, we, me and Clive used to like fucking about like that, you know, and we uh, was always up for a laugh. Yeah, there's been, there's been quite a few bits of pieces. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, uh, as far as uh, what's your uh, what's your take on, on on modern on the modern day of, of heavy metal music? Like, how do you feel about how how far it's come and and what it's doing now? It hasn't really come that far, has it? <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> well, it's not that good. Uh, I don't know. I'm not in all this fucking emo shit and crap like that, you know. Well, <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's not rock music. It's bollocks. Um, it's, a load, it's, a load of, it's a load of kids whose mummy and daddy have paid for their equipment and that, and they go sort of throwing the guitars around and making a bit of a screeching noise, and that's the end of it. I don't know. Yeah, fucking hell. Let's get rid of that crap. It doesn't last long. You know, it's not that. I, there's not much I've heard recently that, that's ever sort of moved me in any way, shape, or form. Well, as far as uh, so, so coming up uh, soon, you, you've 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 got some new songs that you that you're writing that you. We are writing at the minute, but uh, Air Force are finishing mixing their album down at the moment, which is a great thing. Uh, I mean, they're good, good old old school British heavy metal, which is great. Mind you, they've got an Italian singer, but. Um, but yeah, but we've all been friends for so long. That's what I love about it as well. And you know, uh, and now we're back in the band, or back in the band as well, which is fantastic. And I speak to Dougie and that a lot, and they come down to visit me and that, because I can't really travel that far at the minute. Um, yeah, and it's been good. So um, they're, they're doing that, and then once that's out of the way, then me and Chop are going to get our heads together. He sent me a couple of ideas, which is really good. So just wanted to expand on it a bit and make it a whole song. And then once he's done that, I'll start writing with him, and we'll see how it goes from there. So, yeah, that's, that's quite exciting. Um, there will be an album out, but I can't tell you when. As I said, my number one priority is get myself back on my feet. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've got the next operation I'm having done is my left knee's being taken out, and then they're going to put a replacement in, and then I'm going to have to do loads of weeks of rehab to get up and hop about on one leg because um, the other one's got no knee in it whatsoever. It's got some medical cement in there. That's why I can't bend it at all. It's just a fucking pain in the arse, I tell you. But, um, yeah, it's difficult. Um, so I've got to learn how to do that first. Uh, but the way I'm seeing it, and everyone going, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. But I'm so pissed off. Um, I've always get the left leg done. If I can hop about on crutches, that means I can get on an aeroplane. That means I can go over and see, see my family. And... Uh, I can do a few shows. That's the way I'm looking at it. So I'm just waiting for him to call me in. I'm, uh, he's also put me down on a short list as well. So if anyone cancels an operation or, God help, they, they die or something, <laughs> he'll, he'll call me in. Uh, as long as I've got two days' notice to get all my transport and all that. Then. I know it's gonna, I'll be in hospital for over two weeks anyway. But as my right leg is the one I'm really worried about because I almost lost it. And I still might yet. You know, we don't know. We're, and this is all through sepsis. You know, um, I've got such bad tissue and that in my legs and it's so weak and it keeps going into sort of ulcerations. Uh, and that means when you've got an ulceration, you can't operate. Uh, it's just, 
Cat 22, so it's driving me insane. <laughs> That's definitely understandable, man. That is, that is brutal. I hope for, uh, <sighs> hopefully... You know what I got it from? An impacted tooth. I didn't even have a toothache. I didn't even know there was an impacted tooth at the back of my fucking mouth. Really? Um, yeah, and I didn't know. And it, it's a septic attack your blood, doesn't it? And it got into me, and I had that 45 minutes, which is crucial to get you to hospital. I'd actually arrived home that morning from Argentina. I've done a few shows in the wheelchair and all in Japan and in Argentina, and it's been there fantastic. And we extended the shows by another week, cancelled the flights, because uh, they wouldn't let me leave Argentina, so I came back eventually on the 5th of May 2015, and then collapsed. As soon as I got home, lucky I had my phone in my hand, and dialed emergency services, they kicked my door down, took me to hospital, I spent uh, eight months in the hospital, and then another year and a half of uh, sort of clinic and convalescing and that, and then they sent me home. And I'm home here, and just waiting for operations. Funny. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. It's fucked up. <laughs> it's seriously fucked up. I mean, a couple of friends of mine have had sepsis, and mm -hmm. they've been in hospital, and, you know, not been very well, but after that, they're fine. You know, and they're, they're out, well, a friend of mine had it uh, last year. He's in hospital 10 days, come out, and he's out again, doing whatever he's He's riding, he's back on his arm, he's doing this, he's doing that. I haven't done fuck all. <laughs> well, yeah, well, hopefully they can get you all fixed up soon, man. Well, they can. They, they can do it. Yeah, but as I said, just get me, get me one leg working, and I can off about a bit, you know. That'll do me for the time being. <laughs> and then we work on the other one, because the right leg, as I said, is a, it's a bit of a train wreck, actually. It's, uh, it's absolutely like it took the knee out, just in case it didn't affect any more. Uh, it's just been a disaster. I cut the motorbike accidents and jumping around on stage, a bit of wear and tear over the years hasn't helped it at all. But, uh, yeah, it's just the uh, the tissue in the bottom of it is awful, so it doesn't heal as quick as it should do. But, you know, I'm not giving up. <laughs> Oh yeah, man. Well, yeah, we we. Well, spirit, mate. Never say die. <laughs> yeah, you got that right. But you, you you're right though. You know, you got to take one thing at a time, man. And yeah, I think health. Uh, you, you don't think you think you're indestructible, don't you? But look, look how many people who are sort of uh, just maybe only a year or two older than me, and they're all dying. Yeah, we've we've you know? lost we've lost a lot of lot of people uh, in the music community. <laughs> Lately, oh, oh God, it knocked me for six after Neil Peart died because Rush is one of my all-time favourite bands. I've got everything by that band. I remember going to see them in there back in the old days. It was a farewell to Kings who were at Hammersmith Odeon. I went down to see them with my friend Luby, and we went to watch them. Ronnie James Dio, who was on with uh, Rainbow, Rainbow Rising was out. They were the support band. Oh, fantastic! Oh, what a show! <laughs> I'm a huge Rush fan. I've got everything by them. But that is just a, just a class act all the way around. Fantastic musicians. You can't not admire them. And that is a blow and a half, that is. So I've lost my two favourite drummers, Clive Burr and Neil Peart. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was, I was pretty shocked when I saw that about Neil Peart mm. on Friday, man. Yeah. I, I mean... Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I, I didn't know that. Uh, I didn't. I didn't know that he had any real kind of serious health issues. To be honest with you. No, me too. I thought he gave up for a while because he was hurting everywhere. Obviously, I can understand that. Being, you know, being such an intense drummer as what he is. But yeah, they kept it all a bit quiet. He actually apparently died on the seventh. But they made it public the other day. Uh, his family. But I mean, how unlucky can you be? He lost his daughter in a car accident and he lost his, his first wife a couple of months later with yeah. cancer and then he ended up with brain cancer terrible yeah life's horrible sometimes isn't it I guess well you gotta enjoy it you gotta enjoy it and uh, make the best of it while you're here exactly exactly it yeah I mean I've not even been able to see my granddaughter yet I've got a, I've got a granddaughter she's two years old now I've not even seen her yet only in pictures and the odd video because I can't travel to uh, see them and uh, obviously you know young family and that uh, my son's got to keep working all the time to sort of try and make ends meet and stuff like that so he hasn't got time to like jump in the car and 
come down to see me. Even though we're only a couple of hundred miles away from each other, but for me to get up to them in London is a bloody nightmare. Ah, oh, like fucking military operation. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully things will work out soon for you, man. Well, something will happen soon. Oh, it's got to happen in the next couple of months. You know, the first operation. I'm, I'm, I'm ready and willing to, you know, go for it. You know, just just get on with it and uh, do what we can. We look we look forward to hearing good news from you, and uh, we definitely look forward to hearing some new music soon, whenever you're ready. Oh, I'll be making a racket somehow, don't worry. <laughs> right on, man. Well, Paul, uh, thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to me today, man. I'm about out of questions for you. Is there anything else you want to let the people know? I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, Paul, before I let you go, uh, can I get you to make us a station tag? Uh, go on, <laughs> All right. Whenever you're ready, say uh, something like this. this: "Is Paul Diano, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio." Okay. Ready. Hi, this is Paul Diano, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Rock on, motherfuckers. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Paul. Thanks a lot, man. Well, uh, hey, welcome, Zach. Yes, mate. <laughs> once again, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully everything uh, works out soon, and uh, we'll we'll hear hear from you soon. Okay. Mate, I'm like herpes. I keep coming back. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Cheers, man. Have have a good day. And you. Cheers, mate. Take care. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Is a song.